Here we're given a chemical equation that represents chemical reaction at equilibrium. We're asked to determine the change in concentrations of the reactants and products for each of these effects. The first effect is increasing the concentration of CO, carbon monoxide. Carbon monoxide CO is a reactant and if we increase the concentration of CO, we need to determine which rate will temporarily increase, the forward rate or reverse rate. According to Le Chatelier's principle, if we increase the reactant concentration, the forward rate would temporarily increase. If the forward rate temporarily increases, that means we are consuming the reactants and increasing the concentration of the products. So even though we were told we've increased the concentration of CO, once equilibrium is trying to be established, this concentration will go down because the forward reaction is increasing. And also this concentration, of course, will go down. And this concentration will increase. The next effect or stress is increasing the concentration of carbon dioxide. Carbon dioxide is a product in this equation. If the concentration of carbon dioxide is increased, Le Chatelier's principle would predict that the reverse rate would temporarily increase. So that means this concentration, the carbon dioxide, will decrease and these reactant concentrations will increase. And finally, we're told the volume of the system or the reaction container decreases. If the reaction container decreases and we have all gases as we do in this particular reaction, that demands that the reaction produce fewer gas molecules because the volume has decreased. So if the reaction proceeds forward, it will produce a total of two gas molecules. If the reaction proceeds reverse, it will produce three. The reaction needs to proceed forward to produce the fewer gas molecules. So that means the concentration of O2 and CO will decrease and this concentration of carbon dioxide will increase. Here we're given a chemical equation where gases are at equilibrium and we're told that the pressure has increased. In order for the pressure to have increased, the volume must have decreased, assuming that we did not change the temperature. And that's the assumption we need to make. So if the volume has decreased because the pressure needed to be increased, note the inverse relation between pressure and volume, that demands that the reaction produce fewer gas molecules. If the forward rate were to increase, the reaction would produce two gas molecules. If the reverse rate were to increase, the reaction would produce four gas molecules. The reaction needs to produce fewer gas molecules because the volume has decreased. Therefore, the forward rate will increase. Once we have that established, the forward rate is increased, we could then determine how the concentrations will be affected. This concentration, the product concentration, will increase and the two reactant concentrations will decrease. Here we're given a generic reaction uh, at equilibrium and we're also given the delta H which is that energy change that you learned in a previous chapter. Remember by convention a positive delta H or change in energy is associated with an endothermic reaction. So we need to establish where the heat term is, whether it be a numeric value or just the word heat. And the heat term is going to be on the left for an endothermic reaction. So now we could proceed with the question. How will the system respond if the temperature is increased? Well, increasing temperature means we're going to add heat. That's how the temperature is increased. So if the heat term is on the left side because it's endothermic, 
that's going to drive the reaction forward or increase the forward rate temporarily. And in this case, we would choose shift right. Here, we're given a chemical equation with actual formulas. And also included in that equation is the heat term. And we're told that the temperature is increased. So in order for the temperature to increase, we must add heat to the system. So according to Le Chatelier's principle, if heat is being added to this particular system, it's like adding product because the heat term is on the product side. So if we're adding product, the reverse rate will increase.